The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, and welcome to our Dashboards and Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online webinar. I am Brian Dunn, the Director of Marketing here at Qantas CRM. And with me today is Eric Anderson, the Director of Sales. I'll just take a minute to cover some of the call logistics before Eric starts his presentation. Today, everyone will be in listen-only mode. So if you have any questions, just type them into the question box in the GoToWebinar control panel, and we will answer those at the end. Also, the webinar will be recorded. So if you miss some details and need to see it again, or if you have someone you think might benefit from the information we present, then you can just uh, visit us on our events page at QantasCRM.com. Uh, and the, you'll find the recorded presentation there sometime tomorrow. And while you're on the events page, of course, you will see our upcoming Lunch and Learn webinars. So if you find this one valuable or have interest in other topics concerning Microsoft CRM Online, then you can sign up for future webinars while you're there. Today's webinar should run around a half an hour. So with that, I will turn the presentation over to Eric. Thanks, Brian. Uh, let me open up Dynamics here. I'm here, and th thank you for attending this webinar. We appreciate your participation and hope to give you some valuable information that you can use to help make your organization more efficient and profitable. Dynamics CRM has so many great features, but dashboards are definitely one of my favorites, so I'm pretty excited to show them today. So let's jump into this and talk a little bit about dashboards. When you log into CRM, what information do you need to see immediately? That's what your dashboard should be. So you want to focus in on the most, impor the most important areas for you, um, and, and that may be different for different people. For instance, if you're an executive, you might want to understand where you are with your sales pipeline, or maybe you want to see what's going on with, um, with your leads or with your cases, and more of a, a top-level um, graphical view. If you're a salesperson, you may want a different looking dashboard. You may want something that's focused more about activities. So if I switch to the sales dashboard, I have here's my activities, here's my open opportunities, my open leads, and then I can also see a sales pipeline and top customers. And But everything's focused at the user level. That's so. If I have my activities, my accounts, my open opportunities, those are those are records that are specific to me. So there are a lot of dashboards inside of Dynamics CRM. There's system dashboards, and then I can create my own dashboards. Um, and if we take a quick look at the system dashboards, you'll see that some are oriented towards customer service. We have marketing dashboards. We have sales dashboards. Um, and then, you know, maybe it's a customer service manager versus a customer service representative that needs to focus, again, more on their work. So a lot of different out-of-the-box dashboards with dynamic CRM. The goal of dashboards is going to be to provide an overview of business data. So we, what we want to look at is actionable information that's viewable across the organization. And that's kind of true of CRM in general. That's one of the main purposes of a, of a CRM system is to have visibility across the organization. So we can use these dashboards to really see performance at a glance. And so again, if I go back to a, um, an overview dashboard, I can get a really nice picture of what's going on with my sales pipeline, how are my leads um, working. This is based on marketing source campaigns. You know, what cases are, are urgent and need to be worked on. And so I can get a real nice picture at, at that level. The real beauty of the dynamic CRM dashboards are that they're interactive. And you can drill down into these things and analyze data. And I'm going to demonstrate that quite a bit throughout to today's, um, today's session. So we can also create new dashboards. There's a new button up at the top left here. If I, t I can take an existing system dashboard and I can do a save as on it, and then I can modify that and edit that, and we're going to go through a lot of these types of scenarios um, today. Um, one important thing, again, is, is to focus on how these dashboards are interactive. You can pop out these charts and these records, and you can drill down into them. So if I'm 
if I come in and I want to see, okay, well, what are these leads by source campaign? I can click on this button here to view the records that are used to generate the chart. And that gives me a new window with the chart and with the records that generate the chart. And then if I click on a specific uh, area of that chart, I just, it filters down to the records that are, that are tied to that area. So again, very interactive and we'll, we'll do some more demonstration of that. So what I'm going to do is um, focus for a minute on a sales dashboard. So I'm going to drop into the sales dashboard. Let's say I'm a salesperson. I get in, I open up CRM in the morning, and this is my default dashboard. The one thing to point out is that you can set any of the dashboards that you see here as your default dashboard. It's just a matter of clicking this pin here, and then that pins it as the default dashboard. So from this sales dashboard, I have a lot of lists. And um, studies have shown that one key to efficiency is starting the day with a list. We, we basically want to have a list of here's what we need to work on. So there's different types of lists inside of this dashboard. Again, my activities, the open opportunities that I should be working on, my open leads, my active accounts, and then some charts down here. So really a lot of information on this, on this one dashboard. So let's pop out, let's say I want to I focus on my open opportunities this morning. And what I'm going to do is, is pop this out and see the records associated with this view. So I can take this window, maximize it. Here's my open opportunities and a few things I can do with this. I, I have, these are individual opportunity records. I could sort by rating, I could sort by probability, or maybe I want to look at the estimated close date. So I can sort by any of these fields. I can also filter. If I want to add a filter, I can come over here, um, click a filter, and maybe I want to just look at estimated close dates that are um, this week and or next week. And so I can filter by multiple um, criteria, say OK. And now I've just narrowed that down to four records. So let's say I just want to clear out that filter and, and I'm in my open opportunities. Now the charts are, you can have charts that are pretty much tied to any of these list views. So I'm, I'm going to pull over this chart. All I have to do is click on that arrow and it brings over a chart for me. And so now I have a chart that's tied to this list. Um, I can switch this view of the chart. So right now it's looking at top customers. Let's say I actually want to look at the sales pipeline that's related to these open opportunities. Again, this is my open opportunity. So the chart and the, the graphs are going to be filtered based on this data. So let's switch this to the sales pipeline. And I can, I can move this uh, to the left or to the right. So if I want more space for my charts or my graphs, I can do that. And I can see the sales pipeline. I have qualify, um, develop, propose, and close. Now, if I want to look at one specific area of this pipeline, for instance, develop, I just click on that stage, and now the records have been filtered. They're associated with the develop stage. If I want to click on propose stage, same thing. Click on the stage, now these records have been filtered automatically. So very interactive chart to, to record relationship. Now what I want to do is if I click on a stage, I can also drill down and select a specific field. So let's say I want to look at, okay, what are the accounts that are in this particular stage? So I'll drop in, look at account, and I hit this, this blue arrow here. And so now I have a different view. I have a different chart view that's based on the accounts that are in, again, I'm still in stage two develop stage. And if I click on any of these accounts, again, I'm filtering the data on the left. So I'm, I'm basically drilling down into these accounts and seeing the records that are tied to those accounts. Now let's take a minute and we're going to back up and say, you know what, I'm not as concerned with uh, accounts, but I still want to be in this develop stage. And what I'd like to take a look at is the probability. So I'm going to drop into the select field and select probability. And again, hit my blue arrow. 
Okay, so now I can see within that development stage, I have, um, here's my revenue that's sitting at 80% probability to close, 60%, 50%. So if I'm a salesperson, I may think, okay, I've got a pretty good handle on this stuff. Let's focus in on the 50% stuff because I, I still have a chance. Let's dive into those records. So I'm going to click on probability 50 here. And again, it filters the records on the left. These are the 50% probability opportunities. And from here, if I say, oh, yeah, I remember this one. I really need to follow up with them. Let's open this opportunity up and start working on it. I just click on the opportunity. And now I'm inside of my opportunity business process flow. This is another a great feature about Dynamic CRM. I don't want to spend too much time with it, but you know the ability to modify these stages and what fields are required at which stages of an opportunity flow is is just it's wonderful and it's very easy to use and, and customize. So you you can kind of see the interactiveness of of the dashboard. So we we started with a dashboard, we popped it out, we went into a chart, we have a list view that's tied to the chart, and we're able to interactively um, filter records based on that. Okay, so I'm going to hop out of this. Hopefully that that uh, gave you some insight into how that works. Now next we're going to take a current dashboard, and we're going to save it as something else and edit it. So let's, we'll kind of get into editing a dashboard. So I'm going to go back to my, da my dynamic CRM overview. So this is a great overview. One thing um, when we look at this overview is that the cases are filtered by my active cases and the activities are my active, my activities. So this is tied to a specific user. So maybe I want something like this as an executive, maybe as a sales manager, I want something very similar to this, but instead of having my active cases and my activities, I want to see all users' cases and activities. So to do that, what I can do is just save as. So I'm, again, I'm starting with a system dashboard here, one of the dashboards that's up at the top here under system dashboards. And if I want to modify that, I need to do a save as. And so I'm just going to call this executive overview, and I'm going to say all users, just so again I'm reminding myself that this is going to give me views to to all cases and not not user specific. So I give it a name and I save it. Okay. Once I do that, I have executive overview all users. So I'm on this dashboard now. And if I if I drop down here, you're going to see that's been added as a my dashboard. It's not a system dashboard. Now, once I've created this, I can edit it. So unlike the system dashboard, I didn't have this edit button at the top or delete or any of these other assign or share. So what I'm going to do is click on edit. So I want to modify some of these components of the dashboard. So we'll click on edit here. And again, I, I like seeing these cases by priority, but as a manager, I want to see all active cases instead of my active cases. So what I can do is just click on that component, and you'll notice as I click on a component, you'll see a blue box around that section, which tells you that you're on the, the right component. So I'm, I'm on this chart, cases by priority per day, my active cases. I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to edit the component. And what I want to do is change that default view. So right now it's my active cases. I want to change that to just all cases. Or I could say just active cases, which would be active cases for all users. So let's switch that to active cases. And you can see there's some other criteria that I could modify if I wanted to. If I wanted to change the, the chart, um, I could do that as well. But we're going to set that. And you'll see it's updated to active cases. Let's also come down into the activities and do something similar. So I'm going to highlight activities. You'll see the blue box around activities. And I'm going to go into edit component. And same thing here. I don't want to see my activities. I'm, I'm a manager and maybe don't have a lot of activities, but I'm trying to monitor all the activities for the group. So I'm going to switch the default view to all activities, and we'll set that. 
Okay, and then what we would do is just save this and close it. And now I have a nice executive overview of, of my sales pipeline, my leads by source ca campaign, my cases, all active cases, and basically the priority level of that case. I can see what's normal, high, critical, etc. And again, if I drill down or pop these out, I can get into the specific records of that. And then I also have all activities. Um, so if I wanted to filter this by owner and see, you know, who's got act what specific users have activities open and try to figure out how I can help them with those activities. So again, that, that was taking a system dashboard, saving it as a um, personal dashboard, and then modifying it. Okay, next what we're going to do is we're going to start with a brand new dashboard and just show you how it, it, the process of creating a, a new dashboard from scratch. So it doesn't matter if I'm on a system dashboard or a, uh, a personal my dashboard, I can basically come up here and click it new at any time and create a new dashboard. So I'm going to select new and um, there's some different layouts I can choose from and you know if I click on these layouts to the right it kind of describes a little bit more of what that layout represents. But I'm going to go with this uh, three column overview dashboard and what I want to have is maybe a, a, a chart or two up here. I want to have my activities down here that I can really focus on and um, we'll say let's create a new dashboard with that layout. So I'll hit create here. Okay, this kind of opens up a blank um, dashboard view where I have different areas where I can add components and because of that particular layout I have three areas here and then I have one area below to add components. So if I want to add something to the dashboard I can just click on the dashboard um, and I can add a chart or a list. So what I'm going to do is add a chart here and let's start out with um, let's start out with the opportunities and I want to see so these are the record types so when I go to add a chart it's going to say okay well what record type do you want to look at and there's quite a few different record types here so I'm going to scroll down to where I can see opportunities and I want to see all opportunities in this case and rather than seeing by top customers I want to see that uh, pipeline so I'm going to drop into the chart and say, give me the sales pipeline. Actually, I want to see opportunity pipeline by sales stage. Okay, so a lot of different ways to present this data. We start with a record type, then we go down to a view level, and then, you know, as far as filtering the data by a specific view, and then we get into the chart type that we want to see. Okay, I'm going to add this. So I've added one component to this dashboard. I'm going to go over to this middle section and I'm going to add another one here. So let's add a, uh, another chart. And this time I want to look at cases. So I'm going to switch the record type to cases. Um, again, we'll do all cases so I can see everything. And let's say I want to look at the case mix by priority. So this is a nice pie chart of the priority of the cases that we need to be working on. And maybe if I, if I just want active cases, again, I could switch to active cases. So I'm not looking at maybe closed cases. Okay, we'll add that uh, component and then um, we'll add one more here. Let's say I want a list of my active accounts. So what I'm gonna do is add a list and just say accounts and the view is gonna be my active accounts. And so this is just a quick area where I can easily drill into my active account. So that might be useful. Okay, down in this big area down here, I'm going to have a big list for my activities. So what I'm going to do again is highlight the, the section and click on list because the activities is going to be a list view. I'm going to drop into activities and I'm going to leave this as, as my activities and we'll select add here. Great, so I populated this dashboard 
with um, all of my components. I do need a name for it, so let me populate a, uh, a name here up at the top, and we'll just call this uh, webinar dashboard. And once I have this, I can just save it. And we'll save it, we'll close it, And I have my webinar dashboard. So opportunities, cases, my active accounts, and I can scroll down here and see my um, activities. So a couple other things we can do. You can see this tab button here. Well, that isn't too pretty to look at. I may want to modify that. So now that I have this saved off as my own personal dashboard, you can see it's down here under my dashboards. I can go back in, into this and edit it if I want to change something. So let's go in here and edit this, and we're just going to say um, we want to, let's say we want to call this particular tab here, and you can see if I click on the component, the blue box is around the component. If I click up here, the blue box is around the tab. So now if I say edit component, it's looking at the tab. And what I could do is change that label, and um, for instance, if I wanted to call it, um, Let's just say this is, uh, we'll call this uh, Ops Cases Accounts. And we could we could pretty much call it whatever we want, but I'm just going to say OK on that. I've created a, a label for that. If I want to drop down here and do the same thing with this tab, I'm just going to highlight it, go into Edit Component, and I'm at the tab level, and I'll just call this, um, because these are my activities, I'm just going to say activities work. And so I have a nice label there. Once I'm comfortable with that, I'll just save it and close it. And now you can see that label right there, ops, cases, accounts, um, activities work. And so I've really kind of modified those, those labels. Now, one other thing we can do, and I, I want to emphasize, and this is getting a little bit more to the list view side of things, but let's say I have this this list uh, view for my activities. And I don't really like this. It has, it has some good data, but I want to add a few more columns into this. And so you'll notice when I'm, when I'm in edit mode on a, uh, on a dashboard and I'm on this component, when I drop into the default view for this, I can see system views and I can see my views. So let's say, for instance, I want to create my own view it gives me a little bit more um, information here. So I want to add a few columns here. So to do that, this kind of gets into the advanced find tool, which is how we can create and customize list views. But I'm going to do that real quickly. And then um, just a few more minutes, and then I think we'll have time for, for a question or two. So let me go into the advanced find. And when I open up the advanced find, it wants to know what I'm looking for. So I know that I'm, I'm kind of focused in on activities, right? So I'm going to take um, activities, or I can take a, a, an already saved view. So let me, let me go to activities and drop into my saved views and start out with my activities. So basically, I'm starting with the view that's right over here, my activities. So from within the advanced find, what I want to do next is I want to do a save as because I don't want to I don't want to modify the default my activity. So I'm going to save it as something else. I'm going to save this as webinar view and we'll hit save and you'll notice that this is now I'm now working on the webinar view. So the details button here allows us to see the query or the filters that's happening to these records. So currently this is on and it's interactive so you can see activity status equals open or scheduled. Um, it's a, a regular activity, and the party is equal to the current user. So that's that's how it's filtered to just to show my activities as it's equal to, to current user. So if you wanted to add more filters or more selection criteria, we could do that on this screen. If I want to edit the columns and add more columns to this view, I'm going to go into Edit Columns. And we'll just say OK. So these are the current columns that are on that view. What I want to do is add some more columns. So I'm going to add, add columns. 
And these are the default columns that are tied to the activity record, but I can drop down here and see related records. So for instance, if an activity is regarding an opportunity, so an activity could be regarding a case or an opportunity or an account or a user, but let's say a lot of my activities are, are tied to opportunities. Well, I could go into this regarding opportunity record type, and I have a whole bunch of other fields that I can select from. And so I'm going to grab the account field, and let's just say I want the sales stage, so I know what stage of the, of the sales cycle it's in. And I'll say OK there, and now if I scroll over to my right, I have account and I have sales stage. Now I can move these to the left or to the right, so let's just slide this over a little bit. And we'll take the uh, sales stage as well. And I'm just about wrapped up here, so I think we'll have a minute or two for questions. Now one great thing about this advanced find is that once you modify this, I'm going to go ahead and save it. I can see the results right from this screen. So if I click on results, it opens up another tab, and here's what it's pulled in. So what's nice about this is I can see that, yeah, there's some, there are some of these activities that are tied to a regarding opportunity where I can see the opportunity in the account or, you know, more information that's tied to that, to that record. Okay, so I've created a saved view. It's called webinar view. I'm going to close out of this now. I'm going to go back to my dashboard. I'm going to say edit. I'm going to go down to my activities. I'm going to edit the component. And the default view, the whole purpose of this was to change the default view to something I like a little bit better. So I'm going to change that to webinar view, set that view, save this, and close it. And now my dashboard is tied to this webinar view, so I have um, again, I have the account and I have the sales stage. If it's uh, if it's in an op if the activity is tied to an opportunity, I have this additional information which I like. So we've talked a little bit about how to use the system dashboards, how to modify a dashboard, and how to create one from new, and kind of the drill down and the interactive um, the interactive um, processes that you can do with the dashboard. So I think at this point, Brian will. Um, open it up to questions. I know we just have a couple of minutes left. Okay, sure. Um, uh, a question did come in. It says, if I am a salesperson and I create a dashboard, who can see it? Can I share it or does everyone see it automatically? So if you create a new dashboard or you modify an existing dashboard, it's going to end up here under My Dashboards. Now, what you can do, so say we create this webinar dashboard and somebody else sees it and says, oh, I really like that. Can you share it with me? Sure. I can take the webinar dashboard. I can go up to share dashboard and I can add user or team. So if I was searching for a team, I could add it to an entire team or if I want to go to a user, I would just select the users I want or I could select all users and add those records, add. Now, when I do that, typically you, do, you probably just want the user to have read writes, but if, if you do want them to have um, additional edit, write, you know, different types of writes, you can modify those. But at this point, I can share that out, and the rest of these users would be able to see that dashboard. Okay, and then there's a follow-up that says, uh, what if I want to create a system dashboard? assuming I'm an administrator. Sure, yeah. So there's really two types of dashboards. There's the system dashboards, and then there's the my dashboards, or what they, you know, Microsoft sometimes refers to these as user dashboards. So if I want to create a system dashboard, the only difference is that I go to a different area. I'm going to go under settings, um, either customizations or solutions. If, if we don't have a solution that we work with, typically we just go under customizations, and I would go to customize the system, And once inside of Customize the System, there's just going to be a dashboard section. Um, and that sits right here. And so inside of the dashboards, these are my system dashboards. Now, I can, I can modify an existing system dashboard, um, or I can create a new dashboard. And once I click on New here, 
new dashboard, I go through the same process that I just went through creating a, a personal dashboard. Okay. So I think that about wraps up our, our time, Brian. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, there's no other questions. Um, so, oh, can you bring up the uh, PowerPoint again? Oh yeah, let me pull that up here. Thanks. Yep. Okay. So uh, yeah, so we'll uh, wrap it up here since there's no more questions. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending today. I know your time is valuable, so I hope the information we presented was also valuable. If you have any questions that come up uh, after we end the presentation here, uh, please feel free to reach out to Eric. His contact information is up on the screen now. And again, uh, today's presentation was recorded and will be posted to quantacrm.com slash events. That's our events page on quantacrm.com. That should be up by tomorrow. So if you missed some details or if you know someone you might think would uh, benefit from the presentation, you can find the recorded webinar there. And of course, uh, while you're there, uh, there are, are other webinars uh, listed. We do this uh, the second Wednesday of every month at the same time. And you can see our year's schedule uh, on that same page at the events page at quantacrm.com. So again, uh, thanks everyone for attending and have a great day.